Welcome to the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. We've got a fast-paced hour of fishing, hunting, and conservation covering the nation and the Northwest, including 13 extra minutes of local content you'll only hear on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. It's Saturday morning. Welcome to your weekend. I am glad you're here because we've got a couple of great guests for you this morning to include Mike Meesberg from Mardon Resort in eastern Washington, who's going to give you the scoop about where to fish this month, not only at Potholes Reservoir, but also at those seep lakes just south of the resort for both trout and warm water species. That's happening at the bottom of the hour, and at the end of our show, we are going to tell you about a great lure setup to catch Columbia River salmon. The person that's going to tell you about it is Bob Loomis, joining us for an extended Max Minute that you'll want to hear. But first, let's talk about what's hot here in the Pacific Northwest, brought to you by your Puget Sound Area Sportsman's Warehouse stores, and you will want to be at the Everett store this Thursday, April 11th, if you are a lady, because it is ladies' night from 6 to 8 p.m. in Everett. There's going to be games, there's going to be discounts, there's going to be raffles, and more all for the ladies, and taking place at the Everett Sportsman's Warehouse store. You don't want to miss this if you are of the fairer sex. If you want to know what's hot on the hunting front, I'll tell you that turkey hunting is sure to be hot, especially on the 15th when the general season opens, though some kids are enjoying an early youth hunt this weekend. If you're wondering where to go, I've got some data from WDFW that will help. In 2017, the most turkey, by far, were harvested in the northeast region of the state. We're thinking Stevens County here in particular, and we're talking about 3,300-plus turkey in this region with a 53% hunter success rate. Second place, southeast Washington, especially around the Blue Mountains, where some 500 turkey were harvested and over 36% of the hunters were successful. Third place for harvest was Klickitat County in south-central Washington, where 417 birds were shot, but the success rate was only 26% for hunters. Doing our weekly check with NorthwestFisherReports.com, poster OD1-1974 reports some very good fishing last Saturday at Black Lake in Thurston County. He was fishing with extended family and casting crankbaits caught a bunch of nice holdover rainbow trout. Rumor has it a five-pound bass was also caught out of there already this spring. The water temp was 56 degrees, so it is definitely a good time to go fishing at Black Lake. Speaking of fishing, if you're looking for the lake in Washington with the biggest bass on average, you may want to head to Lake Osoyoos, bordering British Columbia in Okanagan County near Oroville. A WDFW staffer compiling data about the heaviest limits weighed in by bass tournament anglers around the state found the average Lake Osoyoos bass weighed nearly 3.4 pounds, about half a pound heavier than the next best lake. Our thanks to Andy Walgamont at Northwest Sportsman Magazine for this little nugget. Another fish to catch is the prehistoric sturgeon, and starting May 13th, you can keep them in the lower 40 miles of the Columbia River from the Wana Power Lines near Kathlamet to the mouth at Bowie 10. You'll be able to fish until 2 p.m. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays until June 5th. The daily limit, one sturgeon measuring between 44 and 50 inches from the fork of the tail to the nose, and the annual possession limit, two fish. Finally, if you have a hankering for clam chowder, head to the beach this weekend through Monday for a three-day clam dig. Low tides this morning at 8.05 a.m., so you better hurry. The places to dig, Twin Harbors and Mock Rocks. Tomorrow, low tide, 8.42 a.m., Twin Harbors and Mock Rocks are also open. And on Monday, you can sleep in a little because low tides at 9.20 a.m., the beach that's open is Mock Rocks. And with that... You now know what's hot when it comes to hunting and fishing here in the Pacific Northwest. That's your first local shot of the outdoors. Now let's see what's going on across the nation. Backcountry hunters and anglers, the men and women working hard to keep public lands in public hands. Check us out at backcountryhunters.org. 
Ready for more local fishing and hunting? You got it. It's the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. Right here on Seattle's Sports Radio 950 KJR. Next, we're checking in with Mike Meesberg at Mardon Resort over at Potholes Reservoir in eastern Washington's Columbia Basin. Mike, April 1st is the traditional Seep Lakes opener. I know the ice is finally off most of those lakes. Give our listeners two lakes they ought to be fishing this month in that beautiful Seep Lakes areas just south of Mardon Resort. John, we've had the ice lasting longer than it ever has in our 43 years at Mardon, and it's gone, finally, from about every lake. And in the Seep Lakes, below O'Sullivan Dam, the Soda Lake, Long Lake, and Crescent Lake are very good for multi-species, one of which is walleye. The trout action has been very limited with the ice that is almost completely gone now, and lakes such as Corral Lake, Blythe Lake, Janet, Katie and Susan hold options available. Also on Potholes Reservoir, where the Lind Cooley drops into the primary body of Potholes Reservoir, is another excellent place to catch some nice trout. And before you know it, it'll be full of bluegills and crappie in a spawning pattern. And the crappie and bluegills have had a positive success. Last year in September and October, we caught crappie and bluegills like we did in the 70s. But those nice trout are starting to show Water temperatures are warming. It's just barely 40 degrees, so you want to find a shallow, weedy place. And the number one trout bait is power bait. There's so many different ways people use power bait, and it is the best source. Of course, there's always marshmallow and worm. There's the Potsky's eggs, the best egg in the market. Always a good rainbow trout way to fish. So we're really looking forward to a positive spring. And before you know it, it's actually going to get warm out. It was 67 (laughs) in central Washington two days ago. And that's when spring wakes up in the seat lakes below Potholes Reservoir and on Mardon Resort. And, folks, there's a, a ton of those seep lakes that are great hike in lakes, too, for trout fishing and more. And if you need a place to stay, look no further than Mardon Resort. The website is mardonresort.com. They've also got a great restaurant and lounge there. And don't forget to visit uh, the store there, which is stock full of the tackle you'll need for success. Mike, always a pleasure. You have a great day. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Are you looking to reel in the marketing opportunity of a lifetime? America Outdoors Radio has sponsorships available, and we offer affordable platforms to reach thousands of listeners. Find out more by contacting John Cruz through his website at americaoutdoorsradio.com. Game changing. That's the best way to describe the new Scent Flash UV Triangle Flasher from Max Lure Company. This 360 degree rotational inline flasher features a scent release system attracting salmon to the lure behind it like no other flasher on the market. Soak the free scent pad with any type of oil or gel, or load up the cavity with any type of bait for fishing success beyond your wildest dreams. It's the Scent Flash UV Triangle Flasher, only from Max Lure Company. NorthwestFishingReports.com is the Northwest's largest fishing reports website, featuring well over 50,000 fishing reports, videos, articles, and more, all 100% free. Catch more fish with Northwest Fishing Reports. Don't leave yet. We've got one more local shot of fishing and hunting to wrap up the Pacific Northwest edition of America Outdoors Radio. It's not only time for another Max Minute, but it's also that time of year to think about spring Chinook fishing. And with us here to tell you about a lure made by Max Lure Company for just that purpose is Bob Loomis. Bob, great to have you back on the air. Thanks, John. So, Bob, a lot of folks are targeting spring Chinook. There's not nearly as many of them swimming around the Columbia Willamette Rivers this year. What do you think folks ought to be using if they want their best chance for success? Well, most everybody's going to be using your cut plug herring down in the lower river. That's uh, something that's kind of a mainstay. And one of the products that we actually have is a smile blade herring rig. Basically, it's a two-hook setup. The top hook is movable, so you can move it to the size of the herring that you're going to be using. And the smile blade that's on there, which adds not only your extra flash and movement, I can move that smile blade up away from the cut plug so it doesn't deter from the spin on the bait. Better still, you can fish this behind your new Max Scent Flash, that triangle flasher that actually emits scent. So 
fish that herring naked because the scent flash is going to be emitting all the scent that you need in a wonderful scent trail in and around that herring. And with that big smile blade on the herring rig, you are going to be in business, a lot more business than the anglers around you. Again, it is the Smile Blade Herring Rig. It's from Max Lure Company. Fish it behind a scent flash for your best chance for success when it comes to spring Chinook. Thanks as always, Bob. Thank you, John. And as we leave you today, a reminder, the premiere episode of Northwest Fishing Reports TV is on tonight, 5 p.m., Joe TV, and tomorrow on Q13 Fox, Sunday at 5 p.m. And don't forget, Fish Hunt Northwest on YouTube Live this Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. That's all for this week, but don't worry. We'll do it all again next Saturday morning from 7 to 8, right here on Seattle's Sports Radio, 950 KJR.